the fences at Great American Ballpark don't need to be moved back. You just got to put Tyler Freeman in center field. You are Locked On Guardians, your daily podcast on the Cleveland Guardians. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Today's show is brought to you by eBay Motors. They have over 122 million parts to keep your ride or die alive. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to bring home that big win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Take that, Canadians. Um, I, don't, I don't know. Just having some fun. I, as, as I like to have on the show. I want to thank all of our everydayers. Um, you know, someone I don't know if we gave a shout out to it was Brian Hemminger. I probably said his name wrong. Yep. He's a great writer. Always very kind in our comments. Um, go check out Brian and, and the hard work he puts in. For those who don't know me, uh, I am one of the co-hosts here on Lockdown Guardians, Jeff Ellis. I've been the host of Lockdown Guardians since the beginning of the Lockdown MLB Network. Uh, before that, I was a lead draft and prospect analyst doing national coverage for Scout and 24-7. And before that, I was your fifth favorite blogger at every Cleveland sports blog that has ever existed. I'm Justin Latter, one of your co-hosts. I've been covering Cleveland's minor league system since 2007. Probably mostly know me from tweeting way too much about baseball over the last uh, more than a decade at this point. And a former editor of Guardians Baseball Insider, also a freelancer at the News Herald and the Morning Journal. And occasionally get to read your prospects live. And this is Lockdown Guardians. For those of you who are first timers, this is your daily Cleveland Guardians podcast, where we dive into all the goings on of your Guardians every day from the majors, the minors, and of course the draft. If you are not, an, if you are an everydayer, we know you're here because you need your fix of Cleveland Guardians discussion. And you are all in the right place. And we're happy to have you become an everydayer. Make sure you're subscribing wherever you get podcasts. We are free wherever you get podcasts and you can subscribe to get the next video on YouTube. We got to talk about the great defensive plays by Tyler Freeman. Steven Kwan continues to be a machine. The bullpen is a machine. McKenzie looked better tonight. Uh, we'll talk about Manor Classe moving up the list on all time greats in the organization and some good news about guardians pitchers that people were really worried about coming into. I was very worried about, I can't lie. I mean, it's just the way things are going with pitching. This was, this was nice. But of course the important part here is the guardians are one win away from retaining the Ohio cup. They only had to win two to, uh, to win. I I should have gotten like a bell or a a trophy. I I need to, I need to like take my key and go, go to work and just log in the building and see if I can 3d print an Ohio cup just to have one that like, I'm going to get a shelf back here soon. I was talking with my, my my uncle-in-law who does work so I can put like the gritty size more baseball and some other things, but a little Ohio cup up there. Is that what? Oh, I know you're, I know you're coming around to the, can can I throw something out there? We we have so many new listeners. Um, And many of you have been with us a long time and we appreciate everyone who's been with us a long time. But for people who joined in last night, there was a small degree of I tease Justin about the World Baseball Classic. Like it's just one of our games. It's one of those things. And the All-Star game and the World and the the Ohio Cup. Yeah, I I like to to make less of these. Listen, as a kid, I love the All-Star game as my only time to see certain players. I still have that fondness for it, but I don't think I've watched the game in in a decade. Uh, The World Baseball Classic is mostly just me teasing Justin uh about that but we ha- we have our fun and it's easy to have fun when you have a first place team the reds have been really they've won 12 out of 16 too i want to point out yeah, like yeah this reds been team great. has been they might be you know near the bottom but they had a rough start they will benson i would take will benson back like he is you know he, he's back over league average the funny thing too if you go look at will benson entering the game his batting average he had 63 points lower than a year ago it's because this bat pip is 63 points lowered. It's it's an there identical, you, you know, situation. And what he is now is what he's going to be, which is an above average solid player. And Cleveland lost that trade. Platoon. But you know, Platoon. you know what happened? They won the David Fry trade. And while he was not the biggest one in today's game, you just got to keep doing things like that. But today, you win some, you lose some. Yeah, Cincinnati, I mean, by the way, fifth fifth best offense in the month of June by WRC plus. So they've been they've been on a tear. Second most run scored in baseball. Since June, Cleveland, uh, by the way, in the month of June, 22nd runs scored. But a little bit of bad luck because they are 11th in WRC+. plus. But anyway, Guardians limited the Reds to three runs, and, and one of those was kind of a, well, 
The reason they limit him to three runs, let's be honest here, is Tyler Freeman. Yes. Uh, Big shout first out. First catch. Some of the best yeah, plays I, you're going to see the whole year. I don't know that I've seen back-to-back plays like that from a Cleveland player in one game. Like that's That was just incredible. I mean, the timing of it, the way that was going on. I mean, you had you had uh, TJ Friedel was on. I'm sorry, TJ Friedel had had already scored. So Heimer Candelario was on second, and he took away a double from Spencer Steer that would have made it two nothing. And then he took a home run away from Jake Freely, Freely that would have made it three nothing. So right there alone, I don't I don't know the exact formula for defensive run saved or outs above average, but I got to think those two plays are going to put him in the plus column for both. I mean. One was an RBI double for sure, and the other one was definitely a home run that he took away. And and Freeman's done a good job in center field overall. He made an error the other day for the first time in Miami. That was the uh, the ball he overran that came into center field. The base hit ended up not being a big deal, obviously. Um, overall, if you're looking at his Savant page, his outs above average is negative two, which is the 17th percentile. I think that'll go up a little bit tomorrow. I don't again. I don't know the formula for this, but I think it's going to go up and. The reason the Guardians won this game essentially is because uh, Tyler Freeman kept at least uh, two runs off the board in this one, maybe three total. If you think about it, three runs that could have been the difference in the ballgame. They could have lost six, five. Yeah, I know. I mean, he did. He was the difference. Uh, I'm not going to even get into the, the bunting thing. I know some people will be like, ah, you know, did you take the bat out of Jose's hands? Uh, fair enough, but it doesn't matter because he did so much. He could have been, you know, had a golden sombrero today and you would have taken it because he, he did. The defense won the day. His defense saved this he game. And yeah, I mean, and he was good offensively. It's not like he was poor, but I'm saying it didn't matter what you did with the, uh, the, the bat. It's the glove was enough that you were just ecstatic with that overall performance um, comparatively. Like he was, you know, for a guy, and he's, you know, I, I woke up this morning and was doing some comments, so I'll uh, apologize if they didn't make sense. I, I was kind of groggy, <laughs> but, um, you know, I saw someone talking about how it could take Bazana a while because he's got to learn center field. Apparently not. You can learn center field in a spring training is all it takes anymore to learn. It's the first time Freeman did it. <laughs> this, this, well, we're, I mean, maybe it's just he's exceptional and, uh, but it's also that thing. I'll say it again. And I've said it a million times this year. It's like, why were we not doing this earlier? We knew that shortstop probably wasn't going to work for him. Um, why was why were we not trying to maximize his value and have him out there before then? I do not Hang know. On to but, the idea. Well, they already paid Miles Straw. That's what it was. Yeah, but Tyler uh, Freeman, by the way, right now, and, and this is again, this is why we come back to say, like, yes, the Guardians need to address some things at the trading deadline. But I, I think, think center field. Better. Um, I would argue maybe that I mean depends on who you're putting in right field. I, I think there's someone in the outfield they can they can find to put in the rotation if you can find like a a good bench piece. But Tyler Freeman is not one of the guys I think you need to worry about. Is he a little bit streaky offensively? Yeah, he is a little streaky offensively, but he's proving that he can help you defensively. He's on base for on pace for 15 homers and 20 steals, and it's a 103 WRC plus. It's not a high average, but he's getting on base. He's a good runner. He makes contact. He can do a lot of good things. Um, I do. I mean, we'll see if, if him hitting second winds up turning out to be um, the best move for him overall. And maybe maybe they can acquire somebody that moves him down in the lineup or maybe somebody else will emerge. And Because ideally, it would be great to have him hit low in the lineup. But a uh, month of June, you know, he's only hitting 217. But if he continues to have games like that, you know, defensively, he's got a, actually got a 145 WRC plus this month because of the a couple of home runs he's hit. The walk rate continues to be up. Yeah, I think you just stick with this and you go out and you address other places. One place Cleveland doesn't have to address is Stephen Kwan. I can't believe, like, I, I've, I've almost forgotten that Kwan missed a month. I mean, he had three hits and two doubles tonight in this one. He had a walk. He doesn't he seem human two. anymore. He seems like a cyborg Seriously, sent here to I, kill baseballs. I just, I, I, I literally sometimes forget that he missed a month of baseball and he has, he has not missed a beat. I mean, he leads baseball, I think in three hit games. Um, he is still, even with a month missed, he is still the team's leader in fan graphs win. And again, in season and single season, not really the, the best way to use that, that stat, but he's still unbelievable. Like 446 on base, just everything. He, he does everything well. And 
if any, I mean, if there were any guy on this team that I thought if they could miss a month and come back and be as good as they were before, it's it's definitely Stephen Kwan. But that doesn't it's make it any less of. impressive. Yeah, yeah it just, it's unbelievable. Yeah. He's been uh, Naylor has had his ups and downs. He had the big home run today. Um, you know, we we talked about Bo had a double. What's been going on with him? Bo had a double. But uh, Quan's been there. And, and Fry, you know, we talked about how fantastic he's been. Like, he's a borderline all-star. But Quan is their – Quan and Jose are the drivers. Like, that's – I think you need to give – like, that is where this team goes. I would still love them to be back-to-back in the lineup. I want my drivers – I don't want any let-up. I want those two together uh, in a buddy cop mo- movie and in a lineup. <laughs> oh, my God. I just, I just thought of Fry. Rush Hour. That would be uh... – Hilarious. I'm sure someone will make fun of me for seeing that. I love Rush Hour, too. Is that a, a movie I'm going to get I, made fun of for? I, I mean, I've watched that one. One of them. There's three, and they're all great. I think they're I've making seen, a fourth one. I've seen one. What is oh old is gosh. new. What is new is is back. Hollywood's and, uh, running out of ideas. They're just making sequels for everything. So bring back Rush Hour. Uh, bring back the bullpen. They were great again in this game. So was Tristan McKenzie after an early kind of rough start. We'll talk about them. And we'll talk about if we have time today. We always say we're gonna, we don't have enough to talk about. We're already into this thing, and we wanted to talk about a little bit about draft strategy and uh, talking about pick thirty six. We'll see if we have time for that today. But there's much, much more to come on the other side of everything here. Here at Locked On uh, Guardians, we pride ourselves on getting you the latest news for your team, whether it's the off season, the draft, spring training, the playoffs. You know, we're every day year round. You know what else is year-round is collection season. Just because tax season is over doesn't mean... They want your money. Yeah, they're going to keep coming for you for your unfiled taxes if you haven't. The IRS can garnish your wages, levy bank accounts, even seize your property. Don't let the IRS target you. Let licensed professionals and tax experts at Tax Network USA go to bat for you. Look, I work from home and I work out of state, so I pay a lot in um, regional income tax authority. They're on me all the time. Rita, I always say, my, my girl, other girlfriend, my other wife is is after me for the money for Rita. I have to pay that quarterly um, So because I don't want to get into a situation where the IRS is coming after me. But if that is an issue for you or you're concerned about that, uh, just check in with the Tax Network USA guys. Over 14 years of experience and an A-plus rating by the Better Business Bureau. Tax Network USA has saved clients over $1 billion in tax that whether you owe taxes have complicated matters that require tax planning, like me, uh, or finally hit that parlay this season. You need help correctly filing. I, uh, I had a bet that I would have cashed $8,000 tonight if it worked out. But uh, call 1-800-549-1000 or visit tnusa.com backslash locked on, all lowercase, all one word. And let's now talk about our good friends, over at, over at prize picks. picks um so prize picks you know them you love them they are your daily fantasy hot spot uh, i was looking at them today so i always like to look at the extreme ends and aaron judge has a 10 hitter fantasy score tomorrow bobby witt and nine uh you have cody potek and you have to be determined those ones scare me i don't know i would definitely go under at the extreme ends of it one I do kind of like, though, in tomorrow's matchup with Cleveland is Ellie De La Cruz at an 8.5. I know he's playing well. I know he's stealing a ton of bases, and you get points for stolen bases as well on the chart. So a stolen base is worth five. So if he gets one stolen base and a hit, he's he's a good way there. But I, I believe in, in Tanner. I have faith in Tanner. That is an interesting one to look at uh, overall. Go check out Prize Picks for yourself. It's a fantastic site. It is. You pick more, you pick less. It's that easy. Use the code Lockdown MLB for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Again, that is Lockdown MLB, all lowercase, all one word. You can use the app or the website for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. That's free money. Prize Picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Just as easy to make sure you do not miss what could be the deciding game of the Ohio Cup on Wednesday. Just search Guardians on your SiriusXM app to listen to, I believe it's Jim Rosenhaus and Pat Tabler finishing up this series. I believe in the Toronto series, they're going to have uh, Jason Kipnis. So you're definitely going to want to be by a radio for that next series. They've had a, a lot of guys already. are taking their uh, well-earned vacations. Yeah. Yeah, why not? Middle of the season. Uh, yeah. Get it in while you can before the things really heat up with the pennant race. 
Uh, we talked about Tyler Freeman saving the game. The bullpen also deserves due credit for saving the game. Uh, we'll talk about Tristan McKenzie in a second. But, you know, Tim Heron comes in. Jeff, you said he faced a, a barrage of righties. He did have the one yeah. walk, but only 14 pitchers to get two outs. One of those is a strikeout, so I'll take it. It was a hard-fought battle, but a key situation, obviously, with two on in the sixth inning. Had to get two outs. And then Sam Hench's best performance of him on the year so far, 19 pitches to get four outs and three strikeouts. That's incredible. Kate Smith comes in, 10 pitches, two outs, just nails. And then Emmanuel Class A. It just it never fails with him, man. Like a little like scribbler that. to Josh Naylor that just yeah. doesn't it, it gets into the perfect spot where it's a hard play for Naylor. He doesn't come up with it because he's a decidedly fringe average defender at first base, but it would have been a tough play. But it's just one of those balls that gets hit off class A. You're like, like that really had eyes, like it found a way. And then his control was kind of all over the place, but he got the job done. But just overall, man, this bullpen, not only were they dominant, like they were efficient. I guess the efficiency goes into dominant, but like every game they go out there, I feel like anymore. I was talking to a friend in front of the show about this. Um, you know, we worry a lot about bullpen usage in these games, but think of how many times these guys are coming in. Like Sam Hench is to get four outs, right? And He's sitting after the, the three outs, right? So he doesn't have to go out there and get all four outs in a row. But 19 pitches for four outs, that's pretty efficient. That's low. So as much as these guys are appearing in games, you know, the usage overall is low. They're not throwing a ton of pitches. They're not going out there throwing 20 or 30 or 35 pitches over an inning and inning and a third. They're, you know, again, Cade Smith, two outs, 10 pitches. That's, he can come back tomorrow. No problem. Like, that's the most impressive thing here. And I think we, we have to worry less about the usage because they're, they're really efficient. Yeah. And I mean, uh, Tim Aaron had to get four strikes to get out of that inning. Yeah. Uh, he had a check. Looking- okay. He, sorry to cut you off, but he had that check swing. That was a strikeout and the third base um, umpire. I think it was the first inning or the, whatever inning it was that Jose struck out. I mean, it wasn't even close to a swing and he rung him up and I'm like, okay, so that was a, a swing but the one Heron induced was it? I'm like, I don't know what, what is going on there. Like I joked, that must've been the third base umpire's first game of his career. Cause that was awful anyway. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, yeah, it was not great. So, you know, Heron had to work extra hard. It was scary with class a when he, when he hit uh done in the head, listen, that is always yeah. a scary moment in baseball. That is not what you want to see. The time run was up um, after that. Yeah. Yeah. But he seemed to be okay, which is the important thing. Thank goodness. Helmets are, you know, always improving, but I am hoping, uh, you know, I'm hoping that there's not, no one gets plunked tomorrow because of it. Let me put it that way. Like, I don't want that type of thing to continue on where sometimes we see that. Cause let's also be honest. He wasn't trying to hit him. That wasn't a statement. That just, unfortunately it got away. And yeah, that brought the tying run of the plate. If that guy yeah. really thought he was trying to hit him on purpose, then he's got issues because that was, that brought the tying run of the plate. That is not what class A is, is trying to do. No. I so, think for me, I think it was rust because class a, yeah, uh, his usage has gone way down because last week he didn't pitch against the Royals. And then um, he barely pitched against the Marlins because they lost Friday. They had the blowout Saturday. He pitched Sunday. They were off Monday. So he's had like three appearances in the last like 10 days. So that's unusual for him, which is good, but I think that's going to lead to some rust, but yeah, just, and again, he had that weird, weird ground ball that, allowed the the run yeah, and or that it got the first uh first batter on yeah the the weird one to nailer and then Quan just getting in between he's it's it always it was a bloop with job him. Yeah. yeah always bloops never him. gives up but uh, i mean the hardest ball, the hardest hit ball of him tonight was 74.8 he uh not even 80 you know, he uh he moved up to third all time right in saves passing the closer yeah, of my my youth yeah over doug jones so he's Behind Bob Wickman and then behind uh, Cody, Cody Allen, he'll probably right? he'll probably beat Cody Allen later this year. It'll be it'll be interesting uh, when he gets there. I mean, he's done it fast, man. It's been what three years? Yeah, twenty twenty two, twenty three, and now twenty four. Because twenty even twenty twenty one, he uh, wasn't the closer out of the gate because they were trying to play uh, arbitration games because you know saves get paid and under a ridiculous contract still. Um, and and yeah, there were a lot of people in the off season who wanted to trade him, and I'm. I'm not saying it's not a good idea to cash in a reliever for if you can find like an everyday player. Cause that's a big, there's a big difference between a reliever and an everyday batter, but 
man, uh, I hate to see what this bullpen is without him. They've been great, but you know, it's nice to have the anchor down there and he, he continues to be the anchor. You're, you're going to get people asking to trade for a right-handed power hitting outfielder for him. Oh, for class that's A. Yeah. Be, All right. Yeah, that's what, Kyle Tucker for Manu class A done deal. Here, here's the one thing I'll say. <laughs> and the, the problem with trading is you, it's not happening in season. Let's just, let's no, it's, it's not right happening now. in season. But the, the bigger thing is like, you, if you're trading a closer, it's to another team is trying to contend. They're not trading their proven pieces. Current pieces. You can't trade, right. Yeah. You, know, that's an you don't want to trade move. for unproven because as we've seen with, all the most many of the big prospects this year, they've not. It's not a direct translation from minor league success to major league success. It sure is not. Yeah, McKenzie was uh, a little bit spotty early on. It wasn't great. I give the run the first inning, second inning got kind of rough, but overall he settled in. Had four strikeouts in five and a third, and the two walks were kind of a thing of the past. But he got he was really good. I mean, he got Ellie De La Cruz uh, on a big strikeout. He was he was solid. This is probably the best start he's had. Um, I, I was surprised and how I, much like I thought it was going to blow up on him. And yeah, the reason it didn't is, you know, one Tyler S Freeman Esquire. I, I have no idea what true. his name is, but it, it's uh, like, that's, yeah, <laughs> we've talked about, you know, writing that fine line. And that's, that's the thing is he, uh, you know, he got bailed out a bit, but it was, it, it's at the same time, I'm not going to get upset because it, it's not a pitcher friendly park. And, but he, he came over some of that wildness, got it together and had a, a really good performance for the most part. Just the fourth start this year, third start this year that he hasn't allowed a home run. And that was because of Tyler Freeman. So yeah, know, it's McKenzie, crazy he didn't in that setting. Like that's, that's I know I, I told it. everybody on FanDuel to bet the over on whatever that was going to be. Cause you know, he, and, but to be fair, he only would have given up one. The one was a double, but it would have changed the outcome of the game as far as um, the double would have, would have got a run and who knows what would have happened on the next pitch. So take it, move on. And hopefully he, uh, you know, has the better part of this because after that happened, he was much better after that first, that was all the first inning after that happened. He was much better. So Cleveland's got to figure his first inning stuff out. Uh, we got some good news on pitchers on Tuesday. We'll talk about that and hopefully get into a little bit of draft stuff at the end, but uh, you know, we'll see how things play out on this one. Passion drive patience makes an excellent hitter. It also is a formula for winning championships and keeping your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to Stephen Kwan and peak performance. Superchargers and roof racks. I bet Stephen Kwan could have those. Uh, exhaust <laughs> kits, LED headlights. Let's put them all on Kwan and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, more style and speed. Uh, eBay Motors has you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car Stephen Kwan and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. Some of the best radio calls are available to you on your Sirius XM app. If you search Guardians and listen to the final game of the road trip part of the Ohio Cup at 710 on Wednesday, just search Guardians on the app. All right. So Ben Lively, he's fine. He's he's lively and, and back at him. It's Saturday. He is full of options. Saturday. Yeah, we'll. I guess be watching that one closely to see how he responds. Make sure everything is good. It was a very vague description about just in general like I just, they didn't really say what they tested him they just said he was having some general like soreness and stiffness and is he maybe um, not used to quite the usage he's been since he's been kind of a hybrid role the last few years is the only thing i wonder could about. be yeah yeah his his past is a little bit checkered in terms of uh usage by the way tyler freeman's middle name andrew not s esquire i don't think he's a lawyer so um but there you go if it's good enough yeah, for think... Bill Ed and Ted, it's good enough for me. <laughs> the usage uh, overall, yeah, it could be a bit for him. It's it's probably, the, I mean, he didn't start in, you know, he also had the virus back in spring training too. So he, who knows what it could have been. It was a very vague one, but uh, everybody was kind of freaking out about that. So good thing he was fine. But I would, you know, still watch what happens Saturday very closely because that is also the next time Gavin Williams is going to pitch. So he pitched on Sunday. He looked just fine. He's going to pitch Saturday. Stephen Vogt said, you're looking at 
uh, hopefully up to 75 pitches. And after that, we'll see what happens. But um, when the Guardians tweeted out the minor league rotations for the week, uh, he was not in there. So I, I maybe I think that maybe it was maybe like precautionary that they weren't going to start him on Saturday if Ben Lively, his test came back that he had to miss a start. So they needed to have that option. I don't know, but it's it's set Twitter ablaze on uh, on Tuesday. And I, I tweeted, I said, well, Gavin's not in the rotation. That could be a number of things. It could be he's getting called up. It could be that he had a setback or it could be that he is just addressing with the team, what the next step of his rehab is like, there were a lot of options there that could have gone a yeah. lot of different ways. So you sent me that um, and I'm hoping it is. And I said, I hope it is that third one. It's just, and it was, just well, I, mean, it was stand. I think it was, um, for sure. It was, it was them just making sure lively came through his testing. Okay. And they didn't need to have his next start on Saturday, um, for Cleveland. So he gets one more. I'd imagine after that he'll be backed up. Uh, once they get the seventy-five pitches, I can imagine that the next one uh, should be in Cleveland after that. And Joey Cantillo pitched forty pitches in three innings on Tuesday as well. I watched that start. He looked good. Uh, Eleven swings and misses. Five of them came on the changeup. He was about ninety-three, ninety-four with the fastball. Um, the slider and the curve were kind of iffy, but um, I've seen them better. And in the last start, they were much better than that. So um, I have high hopes. I think that uh, sometime in July or August, he'll be an option and uh, maybe sooner. And I'd, hopefully they don't need him. But um, I like where he's at coming back. I just, you know, we'll see where the, we the command is. You know, they need the no depth. Doubt, and I think he is he's ready to be that depth. So he'll we'll see him at some point this year, I'm sure. Uh, final game of this two game set before an off day on Thursday is Tanner Bybee versus Nick Lodolo. That should be a lot of fun Two very good pitchers um, in this one. So good news for the guardians holding the reds offense in check. They've been hot. Hopefully Bybee can do that. The Royals lost. So that puts the guardians up five and a half in the division. Got to love that cushion in the middle of June that you have that five and a half game lead. And um, you know, we saw it, it, it did shrink very quickly when Cleveland had their issues with Colorado and the Rockies, or I'm sorry, the, the Royals just couldn't lose and they did never gain ground when they won nine in a row. Um, but up to five and a half now, that does give you have, a little bit of cushion. Know, they've, they've lost some, yeah. They, they, they have not been as strong of late overall. Uh, you know, they did do well against Seattle, but that was also they a, lost Hunter Renfro, who was their best yeah. hitter this month, besides Bobby Witt, I should say, but their best outfielder. No, um, that's a big um, loss. He's been good, it is. He's been playing well. He Broke his own toe, which is unfortunate. He hit the ball off his foot. Yeah. Um, don't want to root for injuries for anyone, even if it is benefiting Cleveland in this Cleveland, case. Right. But um, yeah, you know, right now Kansas City is struggling a bit. And it's uh it's nice to build up that lead. There's no other way around it. It is nice to build up the overall lead. Um, it is. And it gives you a little bit of there. yeah, it gives you a little bit of cushion the rest of the way uh, the rest of the way. I was looking it up though. Cleveland's only got a win. Um they go 500 if they go 500 from here on out because i saw the it was the 60 i don't know what it was something game of the season there's less than 100 games to go which always makes me sad when we hit that point but um they'll win 92 games if they go 500 from here on out i think that's doable i think that wins the division so we'll see yeah i, I think um, for sure that wins the division it's just yeah you know can they keep yeah yeah i, I, I i'm feeling guys. good right. yeah and hell you never know with hell i mean this is true we had some questions on Twitter about uh, what is the Cape? We always refer to the Cape Cod League on here in terms of draft. And it starts important. this weekend. Yeah, it starts June 15th on Saturday. So that's exciting. There's some good rosters. I know we'll be paying attention. But somebody asked us on the Cape about what that is and what that means. So we we'll probably should just clarify for a lot of people because uh, I guess we probably refer to it so often. Maybe some people don't realize what we're talking about. But I'll let you kind of cover that, Jeff. I refuse. No, so the Cape Cod League is – there's wood bat leagues in the summer and there's the North woods. There's, you know, there's the draft invitational league that is already going on right now. Uh, there's, there's so many then like the new England one it basically comes down to this. Uh, I don't know yet where the draft league slot said, but there is the Cape Cod and the North woods. The North woods are 10 minutes Those from my door. Too. Yeah. And, I'd, say, and I'd say the draft league is probably number three right now, three. but Cape Cod is still head and shoulders above North woods. Anyone who can get into the Cape goes to the Cape because it is the elite. It is the best of the best in a setting that uh, that every scout, every team has scouts at every game. Like your best chance to be seen is this. So it is the best players. And it's not just like big schools. Like we've talked about Sean Keyes, a guy we both like who's at Bucknell. 
who was great in the Cape and has great data as well. And he was there. So it's where did, you know, the Guardians first learn about Tugboat? The Cape. That is where I guarantee you they had their first Tugboat exposure. Uh, and he was really good there. I tipped him off. <laughs> you did. You did on this very podcast. <laughs> it was all me. And we went through. We looked at data last year. It's like Jonah, Jonah Evan Kula. We talked about him, I think, off air. Yeah. Like, or, or That's maybe why I discovered Jamie a, Arnold. Yeah. yeah. We, you know, we've done it, this in Cleveland minds it more than anything else. It is their number one thing. They take guys based, you know, chase the ladder, Cape MVP. They go for Cape data. Who, and then, frankly, before his injury, DeLotta was having a disappointing junior year. It was short, but it was a disappointing junior. He was a guy who was talked about to go first overall, and he fell to the middle of the first round. He could have fallen later because of injury concerns and performance. Uh, Hunter Gaddis did not have the best junior year, so they value the Cape Cod and the performance because it's the elite of the elite in a wood bat league. Um, yeah, it takes and, the metal bat, metal bat part out of it, and it's yeah. it's a high concentration of good players. Like I know there's a lot of people it is who are the like, oh, well, the Pac-12 stinks, or this conference stinks. Um, the, 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 all the best players all conferences stunk this year, pitching wise, like, sh- let's be honest really about it. There was not, there was a handful mm-hmm. of good pitchers this year. And then after that, it's like, you know, there's the big three who are going to go in the top 15. And then you got the Prager, you know, Ryan Prager and Holman there, and Ryan Johnson, five but, college pitchers in the first round, maybe, maybe. And, uh, the sin, sin and jello whose name I can't say, oh, so, you know, six. there, there's a, there, yeah. There's a few interesting guys, but it, it was a bad year in general. Like this is not a year yeah. where anyone should be taking too much away from. So if you're with, a pitcher though, or a hitter and, yeah. and you're playing in the Cape, it's just the a Cape high Cod concentration. So you're getting the best valuable. player. You're getting some of the best players from each conference. And some of that depends on like workload and health too. Like, but yeah, you're getting a high concentration of good players all in one place. You're fa- you are literally facing the best talent you're going to face in college at any given time. doesn't matter. Like you've got, you know, the College World Series come up this week, and you had Super Regionals. Even the Cape is better than those matchups yeah. because the players are just better overall in one place. And again, the wood bat thing matters as well for hitters. So that's what that's what that is. And there's multiple of them, but the Cape is definitely the best. And um, you know, there are there are very few examples of guys who have been good in the majors who were not good on the Cape. It's not. It's there's obviously one there are, that I have found yeah, so far. It's it's. I actually, I, I DM Jeff Ponce about that, and he found one other guy. And Jeff Ponce is the king of the Cape. Is that safe to say? Can we call him the king of the pretty, Cape? Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, he found one. I, I mentioned Pete Alonzo. Um, I'm trying to think who he told me it was uh, Jonathan India. It's few and great far there. between. Yeah, it was Indian Alonzo. And he's told me the thing about Alonzo is that Alonzo played at Orleans, which is a weird stadium. It's 436 to dead center. So that also Ooh. affected it. But yeah. yeah, it's it's uh, Alonzo and uh, India are the only guys we could pull. So it's like if you even guys who had short runs there who were poor have not traditionally been successful. And yeah. then there's I think know, I, teams I, would prefer you a play in the Cape and B play well. Obviously, there's not enough guys in the in the Cape to draft where you can only do that. So you're going to take chances on guys who didn't and maybe did struggle just because you get to that point. But uh, I think all teams probably prefer that um, if they have the option to to do that because it is the biggest um, place to, to see like you, Jeff, you know, Jeff did remind us that it's traits, not results, yes. but results there matter probably more than they do in, in college. So, and again, like I no, said, there's I, a lot of scouts there because they can see a lot of good players at one time and the wood bat normalizes things. So it's important. And uh, yeah, it doesn't guarantee success the next level, but like like you said, if you're not good there, then um, chances are you're not going to be good in the majors. But uh, that's generally most teams prefer that. It's not just Cleveland, but Cleveland definitely does prefer that and and, and weighs it very heavily in their draft strategy. Speaking of draft strategy, we didn't have time today. Um, one of the things we wanted to talk about was I think we've we've kind of exhausted the one one talk. I think we kind of we can revisit it again, obviously, but I think it's time to start moving on to. Um, how Cleveland's going to spend its, yeah, how Cleveland's going to spend its money and um, what that means at 36 and 48. We're looking at players in that range. We're looking at players uh, 84, which is their pick after 48. So in the future, maybe tomorrow, maybe later this week, we will talk about um, how they're going to spend their money in this draft, how they're going to you know shuffle it around and allocate it. And we'll talk about some options to do that at, you know, 36. Ben Lively. Oh, 
Sorry, I heard options. Uh, all the options you know, in the world for that guy. We'll never cease to make our jokes about options. We want to thank you all for joining us, rating and reviewing, downloading it helps. And again, thank you to those people. Jake, uh, Twitter uh, messaged me today about the catching the show. So I know he's listening today. Thank you all. And go, go, Guardians, go.